Shalom, everybody. Rabbi Edelstein here with a somewhat curious installment of Rabbi Ian 3, brought to you as always by Maor DC. Why somewhat curious? Well, I'm outside. It's such a beautiful day. The quintessential autumn day, fresh air. I could not film it in front of a bookcase in my basement, so I'm out in my front yard in beautiful Silver Spring, Maryland. But the lighting might be strange, but it's 100% natural lighting. Also, I'm filming with my laptop on our minivan, so if I'm a little slanted, that's why. But I'm happy to be out here, and it's fitting to be in the presence of God's beautiful, magnificent, lovely creation as we talk about a Torah portion that that unfortunately describes the destruction by Hashem himself of his creation. The portion is Noah, the second portion of the book of Genesis or Beratius, after generations and generations of mankind not living up to its divine image, to say the least, God brings a mabul, a cataclysmic destruction on life. The earth was filled with violence and robbery and oppression of all kinds, the very opposite of chesed, of kindliness, on which the world was founded by God. So, okay, the only ones who were saved, we know Noah, his three sons, their wives, and their ark, with two of every species or some more. It's such a huge story. It's such an unbelievably incomprehensible story. I can't do it justice in three minutes. In, we should just sit here and maybe contemplate silently that the Torah is real. It's not a myth. It's not a cartoon. It's not a fairy tale. I know there's a classic Hebrew school story, Noah and the Ark, but it's real. And when you study it in the original, in Hebrew, with commentaries or oral tradition, it becomes so much more vivid and and real, and so many lessons for us. Now, in our short time together, I want to quote beautiful words by Nachmanides, the Ramban, one of the great medieval commentators, great rabbi in Spain in the 1200s, roughly. In any case, his words are so beautiful in describing the greatness of Noah, Noah, and also in answering a certain question, which I'm sure we all have, and he does it in a beautiful way that brings in fundamental ideas in Jewish thought. Okay, so Noah is described by the Torah as Ish Tzadik Tamim Hayab Edorosav. He was a righteous man, a Tzadik. He, he didn't pervert his ways. He wasn't wicked. He didn't steal. And he was Tamim. Tamim means wholehearted or or pure-hearted, sometimes it's translated as perfect or complete, but Tamim means, Ramban says in a beautiful explanation, he was not enticed by the astrologers, enchanters, and soothsayers, and surely not by idolatry, and he paid no heed to them at all. To God alone did he always cleave, and he walked in the way God chose or taught, uh, chose or taught him, for he was a prophet. So, inspirational for us. Every one of us should aspire to be a tzaddik, a righteous person, and a tamim, someone who shuts out the din and the noise of the world and craziness and wicked ideas and walks with God. But now, there's a famous question you probably all had. Come on, even if I'm going to go with you that an ark was built, how could the ark fit all the animals? I mean, even if the art scroll edition of the Chumash very nicely says, if you look at the biblical measurement, uh, the, the, the floor space of each of the three stories of the ark, it was three stories high, had 101,250 square feet. So it was a big ark, right? It was a very big ark. But even so, Ramban in the 1200 says, but come on, not all the animals, even all the birds and insects, there are too many to fit in the ark. What's going on here? So the Ramban says as follows, and I'm going to read, and I'm going to indulge me with an extra minute or so. Didn't want to do it, but I have to do it over here. <clears throat> Ramban says, It's known that there are a great many beasts, and some of them, such as elephants, rams, and others, are very large. He says it would take ten arks, and you couldn't hold the quantity of animals and food for a year, because they were in the Teva, the ark, for a complete year, from the beginning of the rain to when the earth was dry. So here's his answer, giving two beautiful Jewish ideas, important ideas. He says, this is a case of a nace, a miracle, of a small space containing a great quantity. In other words, it, it, right, so... Um, It was a miracle. It was not natural that all those animals could fit in the ark. And that's an idea that appears elsewhere in the Torah, occasionally a small space containing more than it really should be able to. So then he asked the question, well, then why didn't God make the ark really tiny and they could shrink into it? Because it's a miracle anyway that all the animals are going in this admittedly massive ark. But why not just shrink the ark? Why make it so big? Listen to this. He said... 
In case you suppose that God should have made it very small and rely on the miracle, the answer is that the Holy One, blessed be He, saw fit to make it large so that the people of the generation would see it, wonder about it, converse about it, and speak of the subject of the flood so perhaps they would repent. And it took Noah 120 years, the Torah says, to build that ark. It was massive. Plenty of time for people to stop, stop and wonder, maybe examine their actions or whatever. And furthermore, the Ramban says he made it large in order to reduce the miracle. For such is the way with all Nisim in the Torah or the prophets, whatever is humanly possible is done with the balance left to heaven. Such a beautiful point. First of all, that even when a generation deserved destruction, God extended the time to, to give people time to repent and time for Noah to interact with the people and try to, you know, get them to repair their ways. But this other idea that whenever it comes to miracles, we have to do everything humanly possible. And then if we're worthy, if it's if it's the right thing in God's plan, then he will make the, 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 the nace, bring it to fruition. We have to do everything humanly possible. I took six minutes. There's no excuse for that. I, I wish I could have crammed more into three minutes. That would have been a miracle like the Ramban mentions. But have a wonderful Shabbos and enjoy the beautiful fresh air and hope to see you next week for a shorter and more natural or less natural edition of Rabbi Ian 3.